The latest progress report from Nebraska's National Agricultural Statistics Service shows the state's farmers are 68 percent complete with this year's corn harvest. That means many producers will soon begin to think about purchasing seed for 2018. Nebraska Extension plant pathologist Tamara Jackson Zims joined us recently to explain how to use disease histories for hybrid selection. While we normally talk with Tamara about controlling diseases during the growing season, she says using information from previous crops now can be a beneficial management practice. Well, selecting the right seed corn hybrid can help you manage diseases in a, you know, a few different ways, but this is our first step in managing diseases. And you can start that the year before you ever plant by looking back at your records and reviewing which diseases were problematic in which fields. And you can select the hybrids that have the best ratings from the seed companies and give you a better chance of having resistance to those diseases and reducing losses caused by them. Which level of incidence or what level of incidence should make you concerned and say, I need to manage this in a certain way? Well, you know, we've talked a lot about the impact of weather on diseases, and so diseases fluctuate from year to year. But if you've had it out there for the most part, except for our rust diseases like southern rust and common rust, everything else overwinters, and so the pathogens are still out there. And you can count on those diseases returning again when weather conditions are right. And so if you have consistent problems with a disease or several of them, it would be worth considering uh, resistant hybrids. And in many cases, if you're also trying to reduce input costs, it might help you avoid or delay a fungicide application. Uh, what diseases specifically could uh, be managed by seed corn selection? Well, we do have a lot of really good hybrids out there for gray leaf spot resistance and uh, you know, gray leaf spot can be managed with a fungicide, but there are other bacterial diseases that can't be. And so probably our best examples are Goss's bacterial wilt and blight and the newer one, bacterial leaf streak. Now, although we don't have ratings for most of our companies yet for bacterial leaf streak, many of them have a good idea of which ones may have performed better in some of those areas. But Goss's bacterial wilt is something we should talk about because a lot of people saw that in different areas across the state, especially in fields that got hailed. And they may have seen disease that they hadn't seen in a while and it might have been a surprise. Well, it's a good reminder that that pathogen does overwinter very well and that we should continue to select resistant hybrids even if you haven't seen it in a while. Are there any other tips for reading those ratings and using them to try and make your selections? It can be really confusing, so I think it'd be a good reminder to remind everyone that not every seed company uses the same rating scale, and even if they are using the same rating scale, like a one to nine, that it's not always the same direction. And so uh, a one might be good for one company, and a one might be on the uh, less desirable end for another company. So just familiarize yourself with the rating scale before you get started. We often talk about lodging at harvest as a sign of problems with the amount of wind we had during this year's harvest. How can you tell if, if it was because of wind specifically or because it was of disease and weakening of the stalk earlier? This year we're having a tough harvest with the amount of stalk rot disease that developed at the end after all the rain. Well, that's a good indication too and a reminder that stalk rot diseases are often a result of cumulative stress from earlier in the season and it can be any kind of stress whether it's leaf diseases or maybe we had some ponding in fields or even some drought stress in some of the corners or whatever and so um, while we may have had good standing corn at the end of the season when we normally would harvest over the next and last few weeks as we've had more rain and wind we've seen some of those uh, deteriorating well some of those stunt fungal diseases that cause stalk rot are very common and they're literally in every field and so uh, they probably want to be mindful of which fields were at higher risk and be sure and to reevaluate stalk strength and knowing which diseases are out there they can select better hybrids to manage that as well and some companies have very good ratings for that too. Let's finish talking about bacterial leaf streak. If you can manage it with other ways other than seed corn selection uh, tell me what you're learning about that through your studies. We have a, a number of different studies on bacterial leaf streak right now, and one of those is a, a Farm Bill grant funded study. And that one's at multiple locations across our state in different environments where we've had a history of bacterial leaf streak. And one of the things we're looking at is evaluating some of our local and common crop rotation sequences and also some of the common local tillage practices, whether that's conventional or no-till or even strip tillage. 
And so at these locations across the state, we're evaluating disease development and we're seeing some differences right now in the way that disease develops across the season. And so we hope uh, after we get yield data in, we'll have a lot more to share with everyone.